Suppose you have a set A, which has the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then you have a set B, which has the elements 2 and 4. Well, in this case, we say that B is a subset of A. If you notice, uh, and B is contained in A. The 2 and the 4 that are in B are also in A. And we have some notation for this. We say that B is a subset of A. We write it like this, where it kind of looks like a U that's been turned on its side. And the order is important here. This means that B is a subset of A. If I wanted to write it the other way around and say that A is a subset of B, I would write it like this. But that's not what we have here. In this case, we have B as a subset of A for these sets A and B right here. In general, B is a subset of A, written as B with the sideways U uh, of A, if every element of B is also an element of A. Let's look at some examples. Here's the set C, that's the set of all x such that x is an integer. And here's the set D, which is the set of all x such that x is an even integer. Well, in this case, we know that even integers uh, are contained in the set of all integers. So in this case, I can say that D is a subset of C. How about if I have the set E, which has the elements A, B, and C? and the set F, which has elements B, C, and D. Well, in this case, we have a problem. If we wanted to say that F was a subset of E, well, okay, the B works, and the C works, but what about the D? There is no D in here. So no, I would not say that F is a subset of E in this case. How about if I have the set G, which is the elements one, two, and three, and then I have the set H, which is also the elements 1, 2, and 3. Well, in this case, H is a subset of G. Everything that's in H is in G. And also, G is a subset of H. Everything that's in G is in H. So uh, when the sets are subsets of each other, it looks like the sets are equal. And that actually turns out to be true. So for equal sets, Two sets A and B are equal if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. We have some other things to note here. For any set A, A is a subset of itself. And for any set A, the empty set is a subset of A. If you remember, the empty set is the set that doesn't have anything in it. It has no elements at all. So that's always going to be a subset of any set you can imagine because, well, it's the set with nothing in it. Let's look at one more example. Let's list all of the subsets of the set X, which has the elements A, B, and C. Now, we'll try and do this in kind of a, a, a way that makes sense. So we have three elements here. What about looking at all of the subsets that have three elements? So that would just be the set X itself, A, B, and C. And we saw before that uh, any set is a subset of itself. What about all the subsets with two elements? Okay, so I could do A and B. That's a subset. I could do B and C. That's a subset. I could do A and C. That's a subset. See, anything else? Well, I could do B and A. But remember that the order doesn't matter in here. The set. A and B in the set B and A are the same thing. So I don't want to write that. That would be double counting. So I think this is it for the uh, sets that have two elements. How about the subsets that have one element? Well, these are just going to be the individual elements themselves. So I have the set that has A, the set that has B, and the set that has C. And what about all the sets that have zero elements? Well, that's the empty set. And we know that the empty set is always a subset of any set. 